Hey everyone, it's Troll speaking. This is our third episode of the How to of Concurrence in C Sharp, and today we are going to reveal a lot of interesting stuff related to C Sharp's word synchronization. We'll talk about the modern task synchronization mechanisms. We'll learn exclusive locking mechanisms like lock monitor, and we'll dive into details of lock monitor to understand what type of mechanisms they are using under the hood. So stay tuned. Let's get started. As always, we'll learn everything in practice. In this case, we have a previous tutorials code example. This is our transaction class. For the transaction class, we have one single public method called transfer. And for the transfer, we have special indicator that helps us to check if transfer is done or not. This is our is done Boolean property. And if transaction is not done, we are planning to have multiple transactional operations here. So in my case, I'm just writing the using console write line doing some additional operation plus we have private transfer money which is just doing the transfer process and also we have one more additional console write line and at the end we have is done it means this three operations here are going to be a transactional operation they should run in a transactional scope okay we are planning to run it in transactional scope but unfortunately when we run our tron we are just now creating our transaction class and when we run these transfer method using multiple tasks will end up with multiple transfer process it doesn't matter if you have here is done checking mechanism or not at the end we'll end up with multiple transfer process why that happens because we have multiple tasks we have multiple thread pull threads behind the scenes and they are using the race condition mechanism just are able to in the transfer class and they are running multiple times okay if you want to learn race condition just check my previous tutorial about race condition where we talked a lot and where we learned about race condition right now we are planning to somehow make this scope transactional scope because in my case when one thread when one task in modern language when one task is in transaction i should block other tasks to insert to be in transfer and at the end our first task should move this is down status to true and other threads should not be able to run this transfer process again let's try understand our problem using visual diagram here so in my case i have three tasks so task two task one task three it doesn't matter in which order they will be used so let's say first the task two will be started and ta in this case we have a transaction instance and for the given transaction instance we have a transfer method which has a starting point and end point here and my task two will be in this transfer that this transfer will be run inside my task two and we have race condition mechanism we have a special time slicing mechanism for our threads for our tasks and for that reason before reaching to is done the task two will be stopped and the other task will be in so in this case the task 2 will be in our transfer method again but we have is done equal to false still that's why the same operation here will be done again and the given time slicing will be end for the task 2 also and before reaching to is done the system will unload our task 2 and then task 3 will be in and it will see the is done equal to false again and it will run the same operation again that's why we are able to see the transfer process three times uh, depending from your tasks let's run it and see the result again so you see we have transfer process started for the thread 11 13 12 and we're doing the transfer process and then transfer process ended then we are doing the same transfer process because when your task 2 is 
in again it will continue from the same place for example let's say your task 2 stopped here and we have a special storage to store the latest state of your tasks and when your task 2 stopped here and for the second time when task 2 in the transfer method it will continue the process from here that's why the previous is done changes by your other tasks will not be recognized by task 2 and task 3 okay but how to deal with this issue to deal with this issue you should somehow mark your scope of transfer to be a transactional scope what does it mean it means instead of having four operations here your system should accept these four operations together as one single transactional operation okay in this case physically you will not remove these operations you will not create a single method to have these operations the physically you will still have four operations but we should somehow indicate our operation system our runtime to understand these four operations as one single operation that's why we are using locking mechanisms and we have two main locking mechanisms one for exclusive locking the second for non-exclusive locking we'll use exclusive locking mechanisms and today we'll talk about lock and monitor and we also have mutex spin lock type of exclusive locking mechanisms but for the current tutorial we'll focus only for lock and monitor okay and the purpose here is just simply you need to understand that your multiple operations should somehow accepted by your runtime as one single operation and the plan here is when your task one is running the other tasks here should wait your task run to completely finish and then system will be able to take your task two and do the same operation in this case when we run our let's say the first our task three will be runnable and the task three will take our transfer and we have transactional scope it means from the start to the end we have only one single operation and when task two and task one tries to enter system will not allow to enter to this scope until task three is done and when task three is done this is done is true that's why you will not be able to run this transfer process three times you will physically run this transfer but this is done will not allow you to run the inside of the transfer process so at the end you will end up only one time transfer the first exclusive locking we are going to learn is our lock in our previous tutorial when we talked about race condition we just simply implemented the best option for lock but today we are going to understand the under the hood of operations and also we'll learn why using different type of locking techniques are not a good choice for you okay so to make your operation to have a transactional scope we'll use a special keyword called lock okay so system provides a lock this let's for now use lock this and the inside operations here is going to be a transactional operation it means when your task locks this instance it is going to be transactional and other tasks will not be able to be here inside your transfer until your current task uh, unloaded by your system okay so let me run this operation and we'll end up on a one-time transfer process so let's see and here we are of course the other tasks is all they are also runnable but we have is done true that's why the transfer process will be run only one time okay and uh, let's try to understand this lock this mechanism here this is a big problem don't use lock this because when other operations like other tasks try to lock these you may end up with deadlock you may end up with 
other race condition issue. So this is not a good choice. Please try to use the lock primitives like you are managing. Right now we are not managing this this instance here because in my case I may create another method here. I can create here another method. So let's call it transfer to. Okay. This transfer to is also locking lock these. So we'll end up with race condition and they can be a big problem for me. That's why using lock this is not a good choice. If you have multiple operations, it would be better to use multiple locks. Okay. And don't use lock this because the other task is also able to catch your transfer transaction, catch your transaction. Okay. So let me show you one simple example here. I'm just using task dot run. Okay. And for the given task run, I'm just going to lock this T. Okay, so I am able to lock this T. T here is going to be your lock this. So other task is also trying to lock the same object you locked in your transfer. So you may end up with deadlock with other unexpected cases. So don't use lock this. Okay. The other option here to use type of object. This is also a big problem because this type of object will return one single instance and your other tasks are also able to use this type of object. This is not managed by you by your code fragment here. That's why this is also not a good choice to use. Okay. And the uh, third option here is to use the lock string for the given string, we have a string interim pool. And this string is also a big problem because when you have this name, this the combination of symbols, you will end up with multiple locks because your other task is also able to use this name here. That's why you will end up with the same problem when you use this and type of. Okay, so don't use these type of locking mechanisms. Okay, but what is the preferable way of using lock? Of course, you should use private read only. I guess private static read only object, let's call it locker. And let's use our uh, locker. Okay. Uh, this is a best option for you to lock your data. Okay, let me just lock your context. And in this case, this is a private so no one can reach to this locker. And that's why it is not possible for you to end up uh, with deadlock or other type of concurrency issues when you use the um, other locks from your other tasks. Okay, so this is a best option for us to use. Great. Now let's try to understand what happens under the hood. Right now I have only one lock, let me just remove this method here. And I'm just going to build rebuild this project. And I will use dot peak to see what happens behind the scenes. Let me just open bin debug dot net eight. Let's copy the path file open. Great paste. Okay, let's get this one. I guess it would be better even to get the DLL file because everything is DLL. Okay, let's open our transfer here. And the lock is a syntactical sugar for us and it uses a monitor class. So let's wait for it. So we have lock here. But somehow in transfer, we have not lock but special mechanism called monitor. Okay, and uh, let's start to learn the monitor class. We just learned that lock is a special syntactical sugar over your 
monitor. So under the hood, lock is going to use monitor, enter and monitor exit methods. I will show you how they, we can use these methods. Uh, so lock just is some sort of a syntactical sure like your async await because under the hood, we have some additional operations. Of course, I don't think that uh, the lock will provide a complex operation like async await. But anyway, this is a better way for you to mm, use exclusive locking rather than manually typing monitor enter monitor exit type of stuff. And of course, understand the behind the scenes operations, we need to learn monitor enter and monitor exit methods, I will replace my lock with monitor here, this monitor class lives in system threading. And for the monitor, we have monitor dot enter, this is our static method. So as you might guess, for the monitor enter, we have two overloads here. First one is using just lock the other one ref bull lock, lock token, I will talk about it. But right now, let's just use the oldest implementation for monitor and it is going to be the using the try finally stuff. And you see this monitor enter is going to be your locks first scope. And this is ending scope for your lock. And that's why this is going to do the same operation as your lock. Okay, cool. And in this case, this was the first and the oldest implementation for our monitor because it also has some issues. Why? Because between your try and monitor enter, there can be some exception happen, uh, some operation based exceptions, uh, memory based exceptions and etc may happen. And in this case, unfortunately, this monitor enter is not inside your try. And that's why you will not reach to the monitor exit and you will end up with uh, long running locking mechanism with your lock. And that's why this was the oldest version uh, till C sharp four and starting from I guess C sharp four, they added the additional ref ball token. Okay, so in this case, let me explain. Let's first create um, token here with false value. Let's provide this token. It means if it is possible for us to catch this token. Let me just move it to try. And the latest implementation looks like this. They move it the monitor enter directly to your try and we have additional ref token. It means first, let's try to check if it is possible to catch this locker. Okay, if uh, token is taken, then you can release this locker. Okay, and let's check if token is taken, then go ahead and release this locker. Okay, let's go to our monitor enters oldest version. So you see we have monitor enter ref lock token. And for the lock token, we have monitor exit. And let's refresh it. So I am doing the approximately the same stuff here inside our try. Okay, let me just build it build rebuild. Okay, this is our build version. Here we have try monitor enter lives inside our try. So you see we have ref token. If everything is okay, token is taken, then you are able to release your locker. Great. Let me just move it to the oldest version. I will just use our lock to show you the previous implementation and let's compare it with our implementation. Okay, great. Let's move down. And here we are. So we have try inside our try we have monitor enter, we have token boolean false. And if token is taken, then you are able to release your locker. Well, that's all that's how we are using our exclusive locking mechanisms, the um, important exclusive locking mechanisms like lock and monitor. And in our next tutorials, we'll continue talk talking about our exclusive locking mechanisms. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, uh, share, like, and I will see you in the next tutorials.